practice. And also sometimes, uh, when you have classes, uh, you can do, since it's now ordinal, you can do different types of analysis. Okay? Share with an example, yeah? Uh, when we say, you're using the wrong tool, you end up being a fool, okay? Or oh, let's say, you end up looking like a fool, lah. Uh, cantik sikit bunyi dia, you end up looking like a fool. Let's tone it down a bit, yeah? Can we agree on that? Yeah? You end up looking like a fool. Okay? So, um, when when you run SPSS, when you run SPSS, assuming you do the fundamental, sometimes in life, you know, this is the, the, the problem now. You know, in the modern era, uh, we've come to a point where everybody wants to use the multi-grid analysis either using PLS or AMOS. Okay? And then you forget the fundamental. Descriptive analysis, okay, the univariate, the multivariate, the, the bivariate. They want to do the multivariate, three or four analysis together, uh, very close together. Okay, sometimes in life, okay, uh, it's good to go back to the fundamental. Okay? Uh, because sometimes the fundamental can answer the question uh, better than you use a very sophisticated tool. Okay? Let me give you an analogy, okay? I've got this thing here called the green apple. Right? So if I want to I want to cut this, I just just go to the restaurant. Borrow a knife while I'm done, okay. But, but if I want to show that you know I'm the engineer, sorry if any engineers here. <laughs> I want to show I am the engineer here. What I do, I use this thing called the laser cutting machine. You know, just put it on the platform there. Sorry, yeah, and then get this boom laser, you know, clean cut. But then you're using a very expensive tool. <coughs> to cut an apple. So the same energy in, 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 in research as well. Look at this one here. Okay. Um, assuming I've got these two, experience and salary. Okay. And I'm saying that um, salary is a function of experience. Oh my god, I'm never good at writing. I, I've got dyslexia, you know, when I was small and I couldn't write. Well, this is E. <laughs> I guess. Okay. It looks a bit obscene like that. Anyway, okay. So um, this is this. These are the two variables, and I want to show that uh, they are they are um, interrelated. Okay. I can just use a simple correlation analysis. Okay. I can just use a simple correlation analysis. But sometimes what students do, they just plug everything into into the software and run. Okay. And they fail to realize that. Okay. When you convert into something like this. It becomes ordinal data, and we have ordinal versus ordinal. Okay, you have to use what we call the Spearman rank correlation because these are ordinal data. You cannot use the PSL because the PSL is for the non-parametric version of the data. Okay, and then again, going back to the, the the story just now, I've got this apple here. I want to slice it into or cut it into two, and I use this fantastic tool. Called the BLS and the or the AMOS. Okay. Yes, you can do. You can do correlation analysis. Okay, using PLS and AMOS, but it is a very sophisticated tool to do a very simple bivariate analysis. Okay. And then if you do your your analysis like that and you present your paper whatever in a, a you know if you go to a conference such as this okay where the review is a bit more stringent, okay, um, then, then you can do trouble. Because it shows that you do not know, okay, um, how to use the instrument properly. You just plug it in, running it, and then printing it, and then voila, I've got my report done. Okay, but you fail to understand the fundamental. Okay, so this is the danger. And this is the danger, okay, that's why I put it at the very top. By using the wrong tool, you end up looking like a fool, okay. So, and sometimes in life, you have to understand, okay, you've got many types of um, data. It can be a quantitative form, it can be qualitative form, okay? And of course, that's very fundamental. For qualitative, you have to use thematic analysis, content analysis, and so on. But for, for, for the quantitative, okay, 
we have to use um, dedicated um, software. So of course, the qualitative software are there. You can run NVivo, Atlas Ti, whatever, and so on. Okay, okay, you just use uh, simple manual processing. Okay, uh, that's what I did. Okay, because I, I came from the old school. You know, when I was a student. Um, oh, I have to sit down. I'm sweating also. Okay. It's 22 and a half hours from Zanzibar all the way here. Can you imagine? And, uh, yeah, and I arrived yesterday. And, uh, I, so please let me sit for a while. Okay. <coughs> so what was I saying, Riz? Are you out there? Yeah. I remember the <laughs> Okay, I forgot also what I was going to say. Uh, Asha, what was I saying is now? Oh, last time you, you were asking about you were doing about the uh, quality. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, back in those good old days, okay, uh, of course, those days they, they had already all this NVivo thing. It was very expensive, you know? So we did everything manually. And what I did was I just used the walls of my, um, my room. Okay, I did my PhD in Denmark. So they gave me a nice room, okay, uh, and I, I, I pasted all my, my qualitative findings, okay, all the themes that I've uncovered and pasted it on the wall all over and then just sit back and watch and then reposition, take this theme, put it there just to see the logical uh, relationship among uh, the themes that we've uncovered, okay. But now the, the software makes things easy. But still, you know, I, I personally feel, okay, um, it's good to see things from a very uh, broad perspective. Okay, of course you can just plug everything into NVivo and so on. Okay, but sometimes you, you lose the feel. Okay, so sometimes you put everything on the wall and sit back for a while and just look and re -look and look between the lines. Sometimes in life, you do qualitative analysis, because how you interpret between the lines is more important than to just generate the results. Why? Why is the respondent saying like this? Okay, uh, what is you know um, the, the 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 hidden, the latent uh, issues that you you sometimes fail to uncover? You know when you interview, when you when you do. Um, okay, I'm not supposed to talk much on qualitative but because. For my PhD, I was forced to do qualitative because my supervisor uh, was not a quantitative man. <laughs> so, and sometimes in life, you know, um, you know this is thing lah, you know, um, because my, my first degree was statistics. I love statistics, and um, I wanted to continue. And, and when I did my proposal, I showed to Yon. My supervisor's name is Yon Sunbo. I love this old man. Okay. Uh, and then after he looked and he said, Amran, if you want to continue in, 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 in our university with this kind of proposal, you better join the mathematics department. Because <laughs> it was very mathematical, you know. So, uh, and then Yon said, you, you have to throw in some qualitative analysis, okay? Because I'm a qualitative man, okay? Uh, I don't mind you have all these mathematical things, I know you love them, but please throw in some qualitative you know, analysis so that it balances up. And at first, I was I was not happy because um, you know why should I? You know sometimes you put this thing called the ego. Why should I follow? You know uh, this old man. You know I don't know mathematics. So what? You know? But then again, in life, there's stigma. You know there's this thing called the stigma. The, the the things that sometimes later on you realize you realize uh, the essence behind all this. Because I was a quality, quantitative man, and then I was forced to do a qualitative analysis, uh, and I had to enroll. I have to learn, you know, qualitative analysis. I have to learn how to do interview, how to do observations, you know, develop protocols, and so on. Uh, I went to Copenhagen Business School, you know, took up extra classes just to understand what is qualitative data all about, you know. And sure enough, you know, at the end of the day, the beauty is, the hikma behind all this, at the end of the day is, it enriches you. Because I felt, after I finished my, my study, uh, I was a bit more balanced, you know. Because before I was this quantitative man, you know. And you talk, you're talking about the left brain, 
and the right brain, right brain development. So if you're too quantitative, you know, the left brain is more developed. And you walk like this, you know. <laughs> so that shows you're a pure quantitative man. So by, by complementing with the qualitative skills that I've developed along the way, I become a bit more balanced, you know. So I walk with my, you know, uh, it's all perpendicular. Okay, okay, that's one. Okay, so so um, you you have to know, okay, whether you're doing mixed method or you're doing triangulation, two different things. And sometimes students even uh, those have graduated as well. They make this mistake. Okay, they they do not understand. Everybody just I'm doing triangulation. Are you sure? Don't be panic. You know, because I am the examiner. <laughs> Some of these people here, yeah, they've gone through the ordeal, okay, me as the examiner. And the moment I say, are you sure? Then it's like a panic. Okay, see, when you when you write, you must know why you're throwing all these terms. Don't just, you know, sombrono, just throw everything in there. You know, you must know, you must know the difference. You know, because sometimes the examiner will ask you, are you sure it's translation or mixed method? And you only know triangulation, you don't even know what's expected. Okay? And then they go into the detail. Okay? Are you, you do, are you using sequential mixed method or not? Okay? Are you doing things uh, in parallel or sequential? And, uh, and I think, <laughs> I think I'm doing sequential lah. <laughs> and, uh, the moment you say you think, the moment you say I think, you are going to die. And uh, the examiner will slaughter you left and right. Okay? Uh, don't say I think. Okay, I know, okay, this is, this is sequential. And then, they will torture you some more. Okay, you see this is sequential. Are you doing qualitative, quantitative, or quantitative, qualitative? Yeah? And you go deeper and deeper and deeper. And you have to know all this at the tips of your hands. You know? uh, so, 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 if you come across this kind of examiners, okay, uh, then you start to curse yourself. Oh my God, this guy is going to kill me, you know? But sometimes in life, this, this very difficult examiner, they help you to become a better researcher, okay? So, uh, and, 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 and the moral of the story is, before you, do, before you go for your defense, okay? Before you submit your paper for publication, read, okay? Read, reread, read, reread read, read all over again, cross-check everything, okay? Until you're very sure, okay, the quality is there, then you go for it, okay? So, <coughs> Um, yeah, descriptive and we talk about parametric, non-parametric, you know. So, um, yeah, we talked about this now. When we talk about this, if I've got ordinal versus ordinal, okay, the parametric tool is called the Spearman rank correlation, okay? The non-parametric would be called the Pearson correlation, okay? Sometimes the results are the same. Yeah, it is, eh? You run, you throw the SPSS, you run parametric, eh? non -par the results are the same or reject HO, then you feel so happy, but still, you are using the wrong tool. Okay, in the eyes of the learner examiner or reviewer or whatever, okay, they will say this. And the moment they say this, oh, you know, and your, your grade starts to fall. And your chances of your paper being rejected starts to increase also. Okay, so these are small, small things that we fail to, you know, uh, to be concerned. And, and it causes uh, problems in the long run, okay? So, um, moderator versus mediator, now everybody, uh, experts now, before in those days, you know, everybody, am I doing the right one or not? Okay, they, they don't even know how to draw the relationship, you okay, and how, you know, when, when, why, why do we use, why do we use this? You know, sometimes these are the, these are the favorite questions. Why are you using this as a moderator? Can you explain? Uh, then you start to do the same thing, <laughs> you cannot explain, you know. Uh, what proof do you have that this is a good mediator? Okay, why not the mediator becomes the independent variable? Okay, swap around, you know. Uh, so, of course, you can say the literature says so. You can say the literature says so, or the theory says so. Okay, Prof. Jerry, how are you? Long time no see, looking good. I've changed. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, it's okay with you. So, so um, sometimes um, uh, you cannot just say the theory says so. Okay, because theories are a plenty, and the examiner will have other theories to show different. And the examiner would say, you know, I've got 
these other theories which says differently. So how do you explain? Okay, I say, oh, I've done meta analysis. Oh, some students are smart. You know, I've done meta analysis. You know, uh, I've done a systematic literature review. It says so like this. You know, uh, and then the 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 examiner will say, your your systematic so called systematic is not systematic. <laughs> okay. The reason being, if you do a systematic literature review, again, now students like to throw this word in. You know, it's a nice word. It's a very powerful word. Europe, and in Europe, um, five years ago, in a, um, a SLR, or systematic literature review, is pretty much compulsory. Okay, because it's, it's a bit more rigorous. Okay? Uh, and, and to do systematic literature review, you have to, number one, uh, Identify or know the years that you want to focus on. Meaning, you will say, I will just look into uh, published journals in this subject matter, which is not more than 10 years. Meaning, anything more than 10 years is not going to be in my literature, the systematic review. Okay? And then you're going to say, uh, the references would be uh, journals which are indexed by uh, Scopus or ERA, or whatever and so on. Meaning, it is just in a uh, Google Scholar Index, Copernicus, DOJ, whatever and so on, those who are not qualified. Okay, meaning meaning the filtering mechanism is very tight. So at the end of the day, you may not have that many, okay, literature to support you. But then, because it is systematic, it is good, okay, then, then the chances when you use this to confirm that your framework stands becomes better. Okay, this is the, the era of the, the way forward. Lah. Okay, let me move on. So um, then, whether we use PLS, whether we use AMOS, okay, um, then the question here is theory less or more developed, okay? Are you replicating a previous study or not? Okay, is this framework proven? Some students, especially uh, the ones from Pakistan, they will say, I'm taking this uh, framework from somewhere, I'm plugging into my country, I'm making some changes here and there. Okay, and because um, it is more or less um, a framework that has been tested, so therefore I'm going to use AMOS. Okay, and then we ask them, are you sure? Okay, uh, sometimes it's not just the framework. Sometimes in life, it's not just about the framework. Okay, sometimes it's also about the instrument. Are the, are the instruments okay, adapted or adopted? Up to what degree? Okay, if the instrument is, you know, uh, is as per what it was before, let's say you use this thing called the service quality parasuraman. Everybody loves parasuraman, right? right? Hello, hello, assalamualaikum. <laughs> Everybody loves parasuraman, right? Okay, so let's say you use this service quality five dimension thing, whatever and so on. Um, and then, you know, you use, this, you use it as it is. No change, no tweaking whatsoever. Okay? So, uh, some researchers, uh, see? Even even that particular thing also agreed. Aslan, be careful. Eh? You might lose the phone. And, uh, luckily, it didn't fall on the ground. Eh? Is it okay? You want to use my phone now? Okay. What was I saying? Okay, instrument. So, uh, uh, some of the uh, more stringent uh, researchers, they will say it's not just the framework, but also the instrument. Okay? Uh, so, if the instrument you have modified, you have changed a lot, you have add on new material, okay, you cannot say, you know, you cannot just blindly use the okay, KMOS anymore because it has changed its nature. Okay. So okay, so that's what number one, meaning make sure you use the right tool again. Okay. okay. Uh, today is Friday, so there's a lot of wisdom involved. Okay. Uh, words of wisdom number two, okay. Um, <laughs> Okay, um, seek knowledge from cradle to grave. Okay, all the good elements are not in the lab. Okay, so then they, that is our job, especially when Muslims we believe this. Okay, the quest for knowledge. Why? And one more, in the context of research, knowledge becomes obsolete very fast. Yes, sir. So, uh, what is the clear difference between mixed method and combination? Ah, okay. Um, Okay, let's look at this one here. Let's say, for your research, you've got RQ, 
Uh, one, uh, Q, two, uh, yeah. Q, 